past 10 years, it has be become very popular to, in the name of anti-racism, mm -hmm. teach a kind of philosophy to our children and in general that says your race is everything, right? And I think that is the wrong way to fight racism, and that's why I wrote this book at this time. Can I, I'm sorry, baby. Yeah. Can I just point out that there is a reason for that? That's podcaster and author Coleman Hughes promoting his book about supporting a colorblind society. And as you can imagine, the race baiters on The View did not like it too much. Welcome to Nerk News, I'm Nerkish. And who would have thought that suggesting people judge others based on the content of their character would be a controversial topic in 2024? Well, this guest certainly did, because he came prepared and maintained the composure of a monk while explaining basic concepts that most of us were taught as children. But unfortunately, that wasn't enough for Sonny Hostin and the Harpies on The View, who called him charlatan, attempted to smear him as a conservative, and attacked his age. When I went to school, getting any information about anyone's race was not taught. No <coughs> history, there was no black history. None of those things were taught. And here in America, women couldn't go to co get into colleges. If you are a black person, there were a lot of colleges wouldn't accept you. Trying to equal the playing field. I think that's what a lot of folks were, have been trying to do. You know, as a counterpoint, mm -hmm. when I was in fifth grade, we all watched Roots mm -hmm. together yeah. in, in public school. I view this notion of a colorblind society similar to the idea of a peaceful society, which is to say it's an ideal. It's a North Star. Mm -hmm. And the the point is not that we're ever going to get there, we're not going to touch it, but we have to know when we're going forward and when we're going backwards, and we're going backwards when we're doing woke kindergarten in San Francisco, uh, you know, with, with, you didn't hear about this story? No, oh, you, no <laughs> but wait. You know, this interview is so dense that I can't even show everything I want to, but pay attention to a few things here. First, there are moments here that you can tell that they live in a completely separate reality from everyone else. Notice how when he said the woke kindergarten thing, they all looked at him like he was crazy. It reminds me of that clip of Dennis Prager on Bill Maher in 2019 where he said men can't menstruate, and they all looked at him like he was insane. Then five years later, Bill Maher is complaining about all that stuff. The second thing to pay attention to are the subtle little tricks they do to undercut his argument without directly addressing it. They'll use appeals to authority, ad hominem attacks, and emotional anecdotal stuff like Whoopi just did to completely derail the conversation. You can tell they really win all out here, and it makes you wonder what they would do if someone like Thomas Sowell came on the show. My argument is that you actually get a better picture of who needs help by looking at socioeconomics right. and, and income. When you do look at the socioeconomics, you see the huge disparity between white households and black households. So your argument, and I've read your book twice because I wanted mm. to give it a chance, mm. um, your argument that race has no place in that equation is really fundamentally flawed. Great. And what Martin Luther King wrote in his book, Why We Can't Wait, mm -hmm. is he called it, we need a bill of rights for the disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, we should address racial inequality. Yes, right. we should address the legacy of slavery, but the way to do that is on the basis of class, and that will disproportionately target blacks and Hispanics because they're disproportionately poor, but it will be doing so in a way that also helps the white poor, in a way that addresses poverty as the he, thing to be addressed. That part is true, but <clears throat> as you are a student of Dr. King, I'm not only a student of Dr. King, I know his daughter, Bernice. You know, Sonny might be one of the most unbearable human beings in existence. I, I know a lot of you say Joy or Whoopi are more annoying. But their buffoonery kind of softens their edges a bit. Sonny takes it to another level, and this guy must have trained with Yoda or something to maintain this level of composure around her. You, you claim that colorblindness was the goal of the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. based upon Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, you know, content of character versus the um, color of skin. Um, Dr. King also said this. A society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years must now do something special for Negroes. He made the argument for racial equality and racial reparations. And so your argument for colorblindness, I think, is something that the right has co-opted. And so many in the black community believe that you are being used as a pawn by the right and that you're a charlatan of sorts. He's, he's not a Republican. Well, so how do you... Who, who, he's who never voted well, for you, 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 you said that you're a conservative. No, you, you, no. No, you did. You actually said that uh, <coughs> in the podcast that you did two weeks ago. I said I was a conservative. He's not. Yes, he's not yes you did. If, so, but my question, to you, my question to you is, how do you respond okay. to 
those critics. I mean, did you notice that sleazy little journalist tactic she did there? Where they want to seem impartial while slandering someone, so they pretend critics are saying something without actually naming any of the critics? And it just gets worse from here. A couple paragraphs later, she lays out exactly what that something special was, yes. and it was the Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, a broad class-based po uh, policy. But he also says okay. you must include race. <clears throat> no, he didn't. He says it's yes, a... Yes, he does. Okay, well, everyone can go... Everyone should go read the book Why We Can't Wait. Let's not get sidetracked by that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't think I've been co-opted by anyone. I've only voted twice, both for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Although I'm an independent, I would vote for a Republican, mm -hmm. probably a non-Trump Republican if they were compelling. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's any evidence I've been co-opted by anyone, and I think that that's... That's a, an ad hominem tactic people use to not address really the important conversations we're having here. And I, I think it's better and it would be better for everyone if we stuck to the topics rather than but make it about me but with no, about no evidence you, but that I, I've been I just I want to give you the opportunity to respond yeah, to the, I, I appreciate your criti the criticism. I appreciate it. There's no evidence that I've been co-opted by anyone. I have an independent podcast. Mm -hmm. I work for CNN as an analyst. Mm -hmm. I write for the free press. Progressives love playing these word games where they change the definition of something, but want to keep the impact of the original meaning. So they'll change the definition of racism to mean some nonsense about prejudice plus power that conveniently omits black people from being able to exhibit it, just so they can use it as a cudgel on everything they don't like and bash white people all day. The problem there is the word no longer has any meaning or impact, so no one cares anymore. Because you write that the anti-racism movement, there are a couple of people, I don't even who, know who they are, maybe you Robin know. D'Angelo. Robin D'Angelo, yeah. Ibram Kendi, for instance. Okay. Well, they, uh, you say that that is just a form of, another form of racism, and you even say it has a lot in common with white supremacy. How can you compare those two things? You, I you compare them anti -racism, because... You're comparing it to white supremacy. Because they, they both view your race as an a extremely significant part of who you are. So r r white supremacists, they obviously say, we all know what they say, okay? Uh, Neo-racists like Rob D'Angelo, they say that to be white is to be ignorant, for example. Well, wow. this is a racial stereotype, and I want to call a spade a spade and say this is not the style of anti-racism we have to be teaching our kids. We should be teaching them that your race is not a significant feature of you, who you are. Who you are is your character, your value, and your skin color doesn't say anything about that. Right. That's, that's actually misrepresenting so, what, what Robin D'Angelo's yeah. position is. It's in her book. Of course, Sonny had to try to get the last word in. Uh, you know, Hughes was 100% correct there. If they're arguing that race is the primary source of a person's identity, and it's something that everyone should be proud of and vote in service of, then they can't necessarily be outraged when white people do it. Because they're doing nothing but creating incentives for that type of identity politics. You can't castigate an entire group of people as villains for decades, then expect them to vote against their own interests just because you say so. Anyone with half a brain can see how backwards and wrong-headed that sort of system is. It's insane to me that that never crossed their minds and he had to explain to him why it was wrong. But let me know what you think. Did Coleman Hughes do a good job on the show? How long do you think you could last on The View before having a mental breakdown? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. That stuff really does help us out. Until then, this has been Nerk News. Thanks for watching. Bye!